Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you a super powerful exercise to make your improvisation lines super fluid when you play over chord changes. This is literally one of the best tools I've ever seen to help improvise over chord changes and to give the improvisational lines fluidity and continuity. But before we get into that, very quickly, many of you have been asking me about Skype lessons and the answer is yes, I do give Skype lessons. And if you are interested, please contact me either on Instagram at Ruslan Piano or on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Ruslan Music. Or you can write a comment down below and I'll reach out to you myself. So, okay, I'm now going to show you a simple exercise that's going to help you play over any kind of chord changes for the rest of your life. So this exercise is building directly on what I taught you guys at the first video that's called how to improvise over chord changes. There is something you need to understand about chord changes that I teach in that first video that's going to come really useful in this video. And that is you have to be able to know what chord scale goes with what chord. That's the ABCs of playing on chord changes and you have to be able to do that no matter what. You need to know what scales go with what chords first and foremost. So assuming you know that, here's the exercise. Let's decide on four chords, one after another after another. I'm going to decide on the four of most random chords in the world that make no sense at all, just to show you how your lines are going to become amazingly fluid and connect even the most random chords. Let's decide that our chord progression is going to be this. C major, E flat major, G flat minor and A major. Not the most beautiful progression I've ever heard. <laughs> but that's good because if you can make these chords make sense within your line, then you can make any chords make sense within your line. <laughs> We're going to play four notes per chord. So here's the magic. We are going to connect the chord scales of each one of these chords in a fluid, seamless way that feels like you're playing a scale up or a scale down. When in reality, what you're really going to be doing is switching the chord scales every time a new chord appears, but you're going to be switching them sort of on the way up or on the way down. So what do I mean by that? Let's start from the first chord, C major. The chord scale that goes with that is C Ionian. The first four notes of C Ionian is what we're going to play over this chord. The next chord is E flat major, and the chord scale that goes with that chord is E flat Ionian. So what's the next closest note on the keyboard that belongs to E flat Ionian? It's the note G. Because this is E flat Ionian. So we're starting on C Ionian. We're going to continue to E flat Ionian from the next available note of that chord scale, which is the note G. The next chord is G flat minor 7, and the chord scale that takes is G flat Aeolian or G flat Dorian, either way. So, what's the closest note going upwards that's available to us that's from a G flat minor scale? This note. So, that's going to be the note we start from when G-flat minor hits. So C major scale going to E-flat major scale going to G-flat minor scale going to... Okay, so the last chord is A and what chord scale does that take? It takes... It takes A Ionian, A major scale. What's the closest available note from that scale? It's G-sharp You see what I'm doing? Every time a new chord comes, I'm adjusting the next four notes to be from that chord's chord scale, but I'm doing it in such a way that keeps a fluid motion upwards, which means that I'm starting the appropriate chord scale, not from its tonic, but from whatever the closest note to me is that is of that chord scale. When the C chord starts, I'm starting from C because of the first one. And now I need to play E flat major scale, but I'm going to play it from G. 
because G was the closest note to the last note I finished on when the C chord was still here. Now I need G flat minor 7 scale, but I have to play it from this note because this is where I am on the keyboard and I have to adjust that way. Now I have to play A major scale, but I need to play it from somewhere in this area because this is where I'm at. So where's the note here from that scale, from the A major scale? There it is. What it requires of me is at any given point knowing what is the closest note to me that belongs to the chord scale of the new chord that I just played. And then I go to that note and I continue playing this new chord scale from that note onwards until the next chord shows up. And then I do that again and adjust to the next chord. Let me do the same thing, but going down this time. So first chord is C, we're gonna play four eighth notes. Next chord is E flat major. I need an E flat major scale. What's the closest note to me from here that is from the E flat major scale? The note F. The next chord is G flat minor, so I need some note that's close to here that belongs to the G flat minor scale. And that's this note. And then I continue playing the G flat minor scale from this note downwards. The next chord is A major, so I need a note close to here that belongs to the A major scale. What's that? That's this note. And then I continue playing that scale from this note downwards. So... Do you see? That's multiple scales glued into one, which is what gives your line this fluidity. Because it sounds like you're just playing this. But that's not at all what you're doing, right? <laughs> it just has that kind of feeling, that fluid motion. What you're doing is you're gluing the chord scales together into one scale, which is how you still sound fluid, even over the most bizarre chord progression, like this one. And you can start it from... C, or you could start it from any note. Let's start it from E. Do you see what I'm doing? Now, apply this to, I don't know, autumn leaves, or apply this to all the things you are, apply this to giant steps, apply this to any song, because it doesn't matter what the chord changes are. When you have one chord going to the next, you can always connect those two chords by seamlessly switching the notes from one chord scale to the next and keeping the same direction of the line, be it up or down. And that's how you get that fluidity in your lines, regardless of what chords you happen to be improvising over. I mean, let me do this over giant steps really quickly for you. Here are the chords of giant steps very quickly. So let's do the exercise over that. I did the same thing I showed you over those 
first four chords. I make sure to adjust my notes to whatever the chord scale of the next chord is. It is the combination of this fluidity of motion with the constant flexibility of notes that creates this amazing melodic fluid effect that can unify any set of chord changes in the world under an elegant, well-crafted melodic line. So I hope you understand the principle of how this works. This can be applied to any chord progression, any jazz standard you're learning, any original song you could ever write is going to give you massive control over expressing yourself musically when you have to improvise over chord changes. So if you understand the way this works, you can go and practice whatever chord progression you have in front of you in this way. Start slow and slowly increase the tempo. That's about it for this video, you guys. There's a lot more tools to help you improve your ability to improvise over chord changes. And I'm currently writing a book that's going to be called exactly that, How to Improvise Over Chord Changes. This book is going to be the most comprehensive, foolproof, guaranteed results method to get you to improvise over any set of chord changes with creativity and ease. If you're new to the subject of improvising over chord changes, I highly recommend you check out my first video on the subject that's called How to Improvise Over Chord Changes. This video is currently getting 1,000 views a day on average. If you like this video, please hit that like button down below. I make a lot of this kind of content and give you guys field-tested, foolproof methods on how to improve and expand your musical abilities. If you're already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that notification bell so that every time I release a new video, you'll be the first to know about it. I reply to every single person's comments personally and coach every single one of you on how to make the best of these videos, even though this is becoming kind of difficult because I'm starting to get between 100 and 200 subscribers every single day now, but I'm still keeping up and replying to every single one of you in the comments below. So don't be shy and leave a comment. Thanks for checking out my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.